G'day guys and Merry Christmas. I thought that in this video I'd give you guys a little prezi and um, unwrap the Elastic Certified Engineer exam which I took and passed recently. So um, in other words, give you my perspective on the exam, pun completely intended. Um, so I thought I'd break up the video into three parts. Um, you can see these shiny tabs on the left. Uh, before the exam, during the exam, um, topics covered, and after the exam. So actually four parts. Uh, before the exam, so what happens um, before you take the exam? What, what's the what's the process like? Um, so the first part is, uh, of course, pay for the exam. But um, what I did find a little confusing um, at this point is uh, when, you, when you pay for the exam, you, you do so on the um, Elastic Co. Um, website but you don't actually you don't actually book the exam at that point you just get like a credit that you can then use to book the exam um, at a later date um, when it actually comes to booking the exam um, you exchange the like credit that you got with um, a website called uh, Truability and um, they're the ones that are actually uh, proctoring um, the exam so they're like a partner of um, Elastico and they um, they're the ones that are actually um, scheduling the exam and they're the ones that are actually um, watching you when you take the exam. So that's uh, maybe one thing if you're expecting to be able to book and pay at the same time. That's not the case. You you pay first, um, then you schedule it later with a completely separate platform. Um, before the exam, um, in the sense of maybe a day before the exam, um, make sure that you've got yeah a clean desk and a clean, quiet place to take the exam. Uh, the reason why I mention this is that um, the proctor, so if you didn't know, the the exam is um, monitored, you take it at home, um, and there is a proctor, somebody on a, on a webcam that's sort of watching you, and you need to have your webcam turned on at the time. And um, they were pretty picky about um, the state of my desk. They wanted pretty much nothing um, on the desk at all. Um, in fact, it might even be nice if you have a laptop because I took this on a desktop and I had to rotate a pretty large monitor around the desk just to show them that there was nothing on it. Um, so that might be another thing to keep in mind, um, the portability of your of your webcam. And uh, maybe the last point is um, have your photo ID ready. So you do need to have um, a photo ID that you can present and they'll need to check that the name on the ID um, matches the name that was that the exam is booked under and uh, I suppose the face on the ID matches your face. I think that pretty much wraps up um, before the exam. Um, during the exam uh, we've got a, a, a few things to go through. Um, so Big, Bo Big Brother is watching as I mentioned uh, the proctor is um, watching you while you take the exam so um, just keep that in mind. Maybe don't, um, yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, in terms of actually completing the exam, um, the way that you do it is you're accessing a virtual environment via your browser, so you'll receive um, a link to start the exam, and um, when you do so, it's basically just gonna be a tab that opens up in your browser, and um, through that tab, you can access um, almost like a, a remote desktop session um, in the browser and um, that's where you actually complete the exam. Uh, that remote desktop or, or virtual environment um, session that you um, access through your browser um, is quite restricted so you've probably read already that you can't access Google um, during the Elastic um, exam. Uh, the only thing that the virtual environment has access to is the Elasticsearch documentation and Elasticsearch cluster. So there may be uh, one or more Elasticsearch clusters that are up and running and you can of course access them uh, via Kibana. Um, and there's also an exam web page that has uh, the instructions and the tasks and, and, and so on. Um, I've never, um, I did. I certainly didn't do this, but I imagine the proctor um, would not be pleased at all if you actually switch tabs. So um, that tab that you have open, which is accessing the virtual environment, should probably be the only tab that you have open in your browser, just so you don't accidentally switch 
tabs in potentially um, invalidate your session. Um, there are, or at least in my case, there were 10 questions or tasks to complete, and um, they're all defined on this exam web page that you access through that virtual environment. So it is a little, a little strange. You've got your native um, browser tab open, and inside that virtual environment, inside your tab, there is another browser with potentially more tabs. Um, but yeah, that's the way that it's set up. Um, so out of these 10 questions that are in this exam web page in the virtual environment, um, some questions uh, will ask you to complete an action, like creating an index or creating an index template or something like that, um, something that actually needs to be created or spun up. And um, other questions will ask you to paste something um, into a text area. So if they ask you, for example, to write an aggregation that, that does something, you'll need to uh, paste that query um, into the text area that is on that exam web page. And uh, maybe one little tip is, uh, I'm not sure if this affects everybody, but I noticed my uh, control C and control V were um, behaving somewhat strangely in the virtual environment. So I am on a Mac, maybe that had something to do with it, but um, whenever I used control C or control V, it was um, opening up like Chrome DevTools or something to that effect instead of actually doing a copy. So maybe just to be on the safe side, um, if you don't want to, um, you know, confuse yourself, uh, just use, you know, right-click copy, right-click paste um, for the session. But uh, again, that may be a Mac, a Mac thing. Um, as for topics covered, um, I, of course, don't want to um, go into actual questions um, and give anybody an unfair advantage. Um, but I think I can um, safely uh, go over topics because the topics themselves are actually um, in the description of the exam. So I think that ought to be fine. Um, the topics that I encountered are pretty much as follows. So um, I was asked to create an ILM policy with various actions. So move something into warm, move something into um, cold and, and delete something as, as per the actions in ILM policies and create a corresponding data stream. Create an index template um, that satisfies some, some requirements. Um, perform a batch update by using update by query re-index to um, move data from one index to another. Um, I had to change the analyzer on a particular index from one type of analyzer to another. Um, uh, we had to perform an aggregation, um, had to perform a cross-cluster search, and had to um, create a snapshot and restore a snapshot. So I don't want to get too deep into these, but if you were wondering, uh, is this topic potentially going to be on the exam? These are the topics that, that came up for me. Um, you will notice that there are eight topics listed here and 10 questions. So if I remember correctly, um, there were a couple of questions that more or less touched on the same uh, topic. So don't expect there to be like distinctly one question per topic. If you don't study a particular topic, you can't necessarily um, rule out the fact that um, it's going to appear multiple times. So it, it's not just like one topic is worth maximum 10% of the exam, since it can actually come up multiple times. And um, moving into after the exam, um, one kind of annoying thing is that uh, since it is a practical exam, it's not multiple choice. Uh, there is, of course, no instant result. Um, I'm not sure if there is a human behind the scenes that's actually reviewing um, your submission, but I suspect there is because of that fact that there's no instant result. Um, in my case, I got an email a few days um, after the exam, and um, yeah, hopefully everybody watching this um, passes and gets a nice uh, positive email. And uh, if you're wondering what the uh, certificate looks like, um, it looks something like this. So. Yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on the exam. Um, hopefully you guys found that helpful if you're about to sit it. Uh, if you do have any questions that I haven't covered in the video, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll try to answer those. And um, yeah, hopefully everybody has a successful result. And um, a nice end of 2023 and a lovely 2024. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye.